Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. In Pharmacology, today we have Nitrates. Nitrates are nothing but pro-drugs that are sources of nitric oxide. So what are the pro-drugs? Why it is known as pro-drugs? Okay, it is because it is uh, a medication or a compound upon administration it is metabolized into a pharmacologically active drug so it is converted within the body and it becomes a pharmacologically active drug so usually we just take a drug directly uh, but this is pro drug which becomes pharmacologically active only after the metabolization okay So pro drug can be used instead of a, a direct drug to improve the absorption, distribution or such things. Okay, so nitrates are pro drugs. So usually the drug includes our glyceryl trinitrate or which is also known as our nitroglycerine and we have isosorbide mononitrate and isosorbide dinitrate so these are the tricks now let's learn the mechanism of action so what happens when we take these tricks so these organic nitrates leads to the formation of the reactive gaseous free radical nitrous oxide so there will be formation of free radical nitric oxide so free radicals will be formed free radicals nitric oxide and related nitric oxide containing compounds so this is the basic mechanism of action okay so mechanism of action So this nitric oxide can activate uh, the glunalyl cyclase, can activate the glunalyl cyclase and it can increase the cellular level of cyclic GMP and it can activate the PKG and it can modulate the activities of cyclic nucleotide phosphodiesterase so in smooth muscles what happens is there will be reduced phosphorylation of myosin light chain okay in smooth muscles what happens smooth muscle there will be reduced phosphorylation of myosin light chain and there will be reduced calcium concentration in cytosol so there will be relaxation okay so this will ultimately leads to relaxation of smooth muscle so that is the mechanism of action uh, of nitric oxide so it promotes relaxation of smooth muscles so in low concentration in low concentration what happens with nitroglycerin it prevent uh, preferentially dilate the veins okay more than the arterioles so veins is dilated more rather than the arterioles so the dilation is more with the veins so it decreases the venous return it leads to fall in left and right ventricular chamber size and end diastolic pressure so diastolic pressure will be reduced and there will be systemic arterial pressure falling systemic arterial pressure also will be falling okay this happens in low concentration okay this will directly affects on the veins rather than arterioles whereas with respect to high concentration what happens is 
so further venous pooling and may decrease the arterial resistance as well thereby decreasing the blood pressure and cardiac output so it can uh, cause pallor weakness dizziness and uh, activation of compensatory sympathetic reflexes so it reduces myocardial oxygen demand it decreases both preload and afterload hope you all know all these terminologies so it reduces preload and afterload it reduces a uh, oxygen demand and it dilates the uh, coronary arteries and thereby increasing the coronary blood flow okay so it increases the coronary blood flow that is the most striking coronary blood flow most striking feature of this nitroglycerin so that was the effect of low concentration and high concentration and high concentration it also has effect on arterioles so ultimately it reduces the blood pressure and cardiac output so its common uses or the very basic use is on antenna pectoris congestive cardiac failure or myocardial infarction can also be used in cases of portal hypertension so its action of dilation of the arteries or veins and relaxation of the smooth muscles helps to recover from these conditions that is antenna pectoris congestive cardiac failure or myocardial infarction all related to the cardiac system where the occlusion or the proper blood flow is not happening definitely this nitrate can be a life saving drug because of its wonderful property that is a venous and arterial dilation so it's um, dosage uh in sublingual tablets it can be 0.3 to 0.6 mg that is sublingually 0.6 mg uh can be given spray it can be given 0.4 mg can also be given as ointment transdermal or iv so this isosorbate dinitrate can be again given sublingually orally spray chewable tablets all those things so this table uh, gives you an idea about the dosage and its duration of effect so the most preferred one is sublingual tablet in case of this antrena pectoris or mi so it um, brings out action within 10 minutes so what are the adverse effects of this nitrates the most common adverse effect is a headache okay adverse effect it is most common one is headache then there will be transient episodes of dizziness weakness dizziness weakness and other manifestation associated with postural hypertension high doses of organic nitrates causes postural hypotension that is related to high concentration postural hypotension prolonged therapy causes endothelial dysfunction endothelial dysfunction with respect to prolonged usage so its tolerance level is important so tolerance to the actions of nitrates develops rapidly and blood vessels become desensitized to vasodilation so reduce capacity of the vascular smooth muscle to convert nitroglycerin to uh, nitric oxide that is the true tolerance it is known as that is the vascular smooth muscle is not able to convert this nitroglycerin to nitric oxide that is a true tolerance so we are talking about the tolerance okay true tolerance whereas a pseudo tolerance is a activation of mechanisms extraneous to the vessel wall so that was uh, true and pseudo tolerance 
so that was all about uh, nitrates it's a very small topic usually it comes as a short note so you can write about the prodrick and various types its dosages its mechanism of action and its uses and little bit about the adverse effect and regarding tolerance okay so whenever you write the pharmacology you need to follow that peculiar pattern mechanism of action adverse effects uh, interactions tolerance uses uh, and first part that is the introduction how the trick activates pharmacokinetics all those things so, so more subheadings or more content you get more marks so i'll come up with a new topic in pharmacology thank you